So please welcome Khalees Simone to the show. Welcome, Khalees. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for having me on the show today. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I've I've had a reading with you a couple of weeks ago, so I got to experience that, which I'm so grateful for. And, you know, I started reflecting on, I've been reflecting on that reading for the past two weeks and listening to it a few times and realizing, you know, everything kept meeting you. Uh, let's go there. Meeting you came <laughs> through this uh, random, you know, there's nothing random, but, you know, talking to our mutual, this mutual friend that you have done a reading with before mm-hmm. her telling me about you. And I, it, I just, were, I just went on it. Like I connected with you that day. We set up this interview, we set up the reading and it was like, I look back after listening to you explain intuition Mm -hmm. and I, it is a knowing and it wasn't a question. And I know now, like when I look back at connections and when I, especially having this podcast, like who I choose now, when I'm, you know, getting into, you know, almost four years of it, it becomes like, who do I really want to share with my audience? It's not where who's going to come to my podcast, you know, like at the beginning where you're just like, you kind of need, you know, who's going to come, but now it's like, I just had that feeling. Right. So I, and I, and I take that action. What do you, and tell me what you a say. wonderful. Which it's yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful energy to be in. And sometimes intuition is more than just, Oh, I think I should do this sometimes. it And it's sort of in the way that you started this podcast from what I understand is that sometimes your body just takes over and you start doing things. And I've had many situations where someone will say to me, Hey, do you want to um, go and do X, Y, Z. And I just say, yes, before I even realize that I'm agreeing to something like, where did those words come from? And that's kind of what intuition is when it really needs to happen. When you really need to connect with someone or go down a certain path, you'll find yourself agreeing to things before you've even thought them through turning up, um, participating and just making changes in your life that you didn't even realize you'd started. And then all of a sudden you're in it. Right. That's when the best things tend to happen. Oh, the magic. That's what I call the magic. Absolutely. We're uncovering your magic. But when I think of um, the way I, people always say, oh, Ashley, you're so good at making decisions so quickly. Like, (laughs) and I, and I, it's, and I just, that's my, I have a knowing like it, it's, I know it, you know? Yes, absolutely. But you have different, when you do your readings, it's a knowing it's your clairaudient you have the right. different clairs. Yeah. So I, I use all the different clairs when I'm doing my reading. So there's clair audience, which is the ability to hear, clair sentience, which is the ability to feel, clair cognizance, the ability to know, and clairvoyance, which is the ability to see. Some people also bring in the idea of clair alience and clair gustance. So clair taste, oh. clear, t- <laughs> clear taste, and clear smell it comes from French. So clair is for clear. Okay. Um, and every now and then I will get a reading where I'll just get a strong taste in my mouth of peanut butter and I'll say oh who's who likes peanut butter and you know and the lady's like oh that's my favorite food and you know it's my midnight snack that I eat all the time and so everything really can be a pathway for your intuition to speak to you yeah you know what one more thing before I we go down the how you started with this whole (laughs) life on this in this body as Kali Simone um is the what what the one thing I've I've been getting out and I want to explain it because my listeners know how important my daughters are to me. Mm-hmm. And in our reading, it was always you had this constant theme of there's you need to separate. You need they keep telling me you need to separate, you need to separate. And I was like, oh, and that feels like a knife in my heart, right? When you're right. that. Yeah. And so, you know, as far as like understanding why you do a reading or you, you know have some a psychic reading was the what or a medium reading or whatever it's there's so much it gives so much clarity and and to me during that reading when you were saying that and it kept coming up and I know that because now you know it is I am separate I don't feel needed in (laughs) you know as much but um it for an example and why it came up to me today was I felt this real um separate separateness from them. Mm -hmm. And it really just really, I was walking, listening to you on my walk this morning. And I was thinking about that whole reading about, wow, I do. It is a separate time. I do need to learn how to separate. And that, so going back to why 
that reading came into my life at that exact time when I needed it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had that clarity today. It would have probably taken me down the spiral of my energy vibration is usually super high. And I'm focused on that all the time because I know how important that is. I felt it, is, it going yeah. down and I said, I, they were going to school and I, I, I was spiraling. I thought, no, I'm learning how to separate. And it, th so that when I, when people say, why would you do the reading or why would it's that it, it just gives you that, oh yes, that Khalees was saying that it's so true. I have to learn how to separate. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's hard as, as the medium or as the psychic to deliver those messages, because I want everyone to walk away feeling empowered and uplifted. But every now and then there's a very blunt message that needs to come through, which isn't a negative message, but it is something that can be quite jarring when you first hear it, but it's always coming through to help you. And it's always coming through to heal your life. There's a point in parenting where we all kind of have to allow the children to be adults on their own and learning to understand how your role in their life shifts and changes through that process and allowing them to grow and shift as well can be a transition you know it, mm -hmm. it can it can take time but it seems like when I think one of the advantages of getting a reading from someone who you don't know who is separate mm -hmm. from you is that they'll tell you things without prejudice you know, they don't know you. And so you can really kind of look at it and say, okay, it's not personal. That person is saying something to help me. They're not trying to hurt me. And you can take time to sort of let it unravel. I get a lot of contact from my clients, especially the first time after they're reading months later or weeks later saying at the time, you know, I wasn't really sure if I was enjoying that or I didn't wasn't really ready to hear that and I'm sorry I gave you such hard time but that was exactly what I needed to hear on the day that was exactly what I needed to move forward right so that's yeah. always nice to know yeah. it helped so much so much so let's go um down to when you were little a little girl <laughs> yeah and you were seeing spirits you were having like these things come into your mind but you didn't you thought everybody did Absolutely. You know, as far as I was concerned, I was completely normal. And I would say to my mom, you know, oh, there's someone standing over my bed, or there's someone outside my room. Um, and one time I remember, I think I was about four or five years old. And I remember maybe I was even older, actually, maybe about six. But I remember saying to her, there's someone standing outside my room. She goes, no, there isn't. So we got up and it was probably nine o'clock at night, but you know, for a little kid that may as well be two in the morning. I was like, wow, it's dark outside. And she took me for a walk around our entire property. And she said, look, there's no one there. You're completely fine. You can go back to sleep. I said, oh, okay, I'm just making it up. You know, I told myself it's no big deal. Went back to sleep. And so from then on, whenever I felt the presence of spirit or the presence of energy, I just told myself, no, you're making it up. It's not, it's not a real thing. Just go back to sleep. And I asked my mom about it many years later, you know, why did you take that approach? And she said um, something along the lines of, you know, as a little child, I, I didn't think you were equipped, equipped to really embrace and understand that and that you would have had even more sleepless nights if we went into the idea of the spirit world than if we just kind of pushed it away until you were older. So um, I definitely don't blame her for that. And I think it was in hindsight, probably a very good approach. <laughs> but she, you have the lineage, she's her side that's of right the grandparents and gr grandmother all yeah have those gifts or you and I, it's, not, uh, it's not odd in your family <laughs> no yeah not a lot is odd in my family actually <laughs> oh, you funny. know we think we're normal but when when we break it down and sort of think about it and discuss it it turns out you know some people might think we're quite odd um but it it sort of comes up in strange places you know it comes up in great aunts it comes up in distant relatives it comes up in direct relatives my I get just the random messages or calls from my grandmother who's still around now and she'll say how are you doing you've been on my mind and it'll be like within 20 minutes of something really stressful happening to me and I, oh. I won't hear from her for months and all of a sudden how are you doing and I'm like ah oh. I said did you get the vibe and she said yes what's been going on I had mm. the feeling and so you know it goes that little bit beyond mother's intuition and there's been situations where <sighs> they'll just come out with things these women in my family where okay, we had a relative that, I don't know if you remember, there was a 
tsunami in Thailand in the early two mm-hmm. thousands. Yes, I and that. Um, it caused quite a bit of it caused it caused a lot of communication issues. And we had a relative that was over there on vacation at that time, and um, with all her skills, within thirty minutes, my grandmother had located the relative, contacted them, made sure they were okay, and the whole family was calm. Wow. So, you know, beyond what any news media person could do, just using her intuition and using her skills, she just managed to do things beyond mm. what the normal family member was able to do. Oh. So it's it's handy having psychics and mediums in the family. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So let's move forward to college. You're into finance, worked on, then you worked on Wall Street. I did. Yeah. That's and right. It, and yeah. I mean, I look at you and think that would be the farthest thing that I could even imagine. Like I look I at know. you and I think of, um, like I would be interesting to hear, I'm sure you've had past life. You do past life. You've had past life regressions or what I your have. past lives have been. Mm. And I, I, I see like, you know, you love Halloween, like witchcraft or some kind of like, <laughs> what, is, what is that? Because I think finance doesn't go into your vibe. Well, that's the thing, right? So when we look at people, we decide what we think their vibe is. But I, I kind of want to blame social media for that because especially when you're in an industry like I am, people have certain expectations of what they expect you to be. And I think one of the biggest things people get surprised about is that I'm not a vegan and, you know, I don't have a huge amount of pets or things at home, but it's not that I don't love animals. I'm just allergic to them. Right. Um, you know, and it's not that I don't want to have a vegetarian diet. It just doesn't support my health goals at the moment and things like that. Um, but I think it's really funny to think of psychics and mediums as regular people that do regular things. You know, I have to do laundry and I have to clean the house every week, and, <laughs> you know, the usual human things. But at the same time, I have these what some of my friends call superpowers where I can see dead people and I can predict the future and things of that nature. So, you know, I do love numbers. I love finance. I love the adrenaline of being on the stock market and Mm. watching the share prices go up and down. I love interacting with people. Um, You know, I also worked in the events industry for a little while and that was just so much fun. So yeah, at the time it suited me. Um, But I, I believe when spirit has a path for you, they will pull you in that direction regardless of how much you resist it and that was what I found was that I was resisting it and I wasn't really interested and I kept getting pulled in that direction and my friends kept saying we want readings can you do a reading for us and you know I'd do it for a few months and then say okay that's the last reading I'm not going to do this anymore I'm going to go back to getting a real job and then you know I'd get a call can you be on this podcast can you be on this show can you teach this course okay I'll do this show and that'll be the last one then I'll quit And I went through that for probably about four years of trying to not be a medium, but I really do enjoy the work. And once I surrendered to it and decided, okay, this is actually really awesome. And this is something that I want to keep on doing. That's when everything started to flow. Uh, You know, I always think of parallel, parallel universes, parallel lives, right? Yeah. What if that Khalees, is there one Khalees that decided to stay with the finance and the Wall Street and the other one? is living this life? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I, I have definitely lost touch with her, but I do think (laughs) about her and I wonder about her and what she's doing out there. I would say she's probably not very happy. She probably was happy in the beginning, but actually now that I think about it, maybe not, you know, maybe there isn't, maybe it's just all sort of come together with me because I can't even imagine myself having stayed in finance for another 10 years you know, and I do think about it in the beginning, I would think, okay, what would I be doing today if I'd stayed in that job? And at this present moment, I can't even visualize myself in that job, even if I wanted to. So I guess my energy's moved quite far away from there. Right. Yeah. I love thinking of that. Like I always look at like a road with the why, you know, like in your life. We do have free will. Free will, right? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. explain that. Because there's certain things you could have just stayed with Wall Street. Yes, I could have. And I think that it's about recognizing your vibration and recognizing the energy around you. So once you start to get in touch with your spiritual energy or your aura in general, your vibration, how you're feeling, recognizing your emotions and not just pushing through every day, you start to realize the difference in situations that make you feel very happy and situations that probably you could say drain you or are more effort than they are worth. And once you start to recognize 
the good feelings and the not so good feelings, it's hard to not keep gravitating towards the things that light you up and make you feel really good Mm -hmm. because you finally found out what they are. So in that kind of dynamic, I think that just keeping on moving towards the things that make you feel really good is inevitable. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to digress from that. Once you've found that path, you'll keep getting pulled towards it. Yeah. You know what that reminds me? Cause my daughters are 17 and 14 and you know, my, we talked about them on the, on our reading, but on my reading. And I think to teach children that you know, instead of just thinking of people living in their life because they think they have to get this job and be miserable and then go home, have dinner, watch TV, go to bed, do it again. But they're, they don't think there's another why in the road, you know, they just live that way. And it's like, oh, if they could learn it so uh, in high school, have a class on intuition. And it, when you love something and it feels good, keep do- going there, taking the, picking the breadcrumbs. Honestly, to me, the idea of being in that situation, in an office job, having that nine to five, but really it wasn't, it was, you know, eight to six, eight to 11, eight to midnight. Um, to me, that's terrifying. And not because I I can't do it because I can, and I did do it, but just the idea that that would keep being the same life for the next 40 years plus, and that that's all it would be. And I think at the time there was a part of my awareness that knew that that wasn't going to make me feel excited about getting up in the morning. Now, for some people, when they're in their dream job, you know, maybe they're a virologist and a researcher, or maybe they're an artist, or maybe they're a designer, and they get to work in something that really lights them up. I know a lot of people that really prefer to be employees than employers. And in that kind of dynamic, yes, you have found the right job and keep doing it. But for someone who's not in the right job, if the future feels daunting, consider your other options consider what else is out there. However, in saying that, sometimes having a bit of structure and running towards a goal that may not be right is enough to get you moving. And sometimes moving is more important than finding the perfect job. And that's something I see as well, especially with the current generation. Um, Or just, I I hesitate to say that, right? Because everyone's like, oh, Gen Z, millennials. Um, I'm a millennial (laughs) myself. So I understand that, that, people can generalize, but I do find that there is an emphasis on finding the perfect job and the perfect career. However, sometimes you have to do something you don't like to figure out what you do like. Right. So having momentum to me is is very important. And I encourage that in my students as well. Look, even if you don't know what you want to do, get into the vibration of working, get into the vibration of finding out what you don't want. So you can at least move away from that towards the opposite. Right. Uh, I'm going to, so let's shift since we're talking about that is you you have it, you, you work, um, with, you have a class on manifestation. I do. And I've been listening to your, you know, listen to you talk about it and about the vibration and the happiness bank. And, you know, it's, I love your language because when I work with my students, it's always, you know, find joy, find something that makes you happy, get there. And that's when the magic happens, but you have these neat, I think of, um, like we were just talking, you know, when people are, you know, that do love the nine to five cubicle, whatever job and yeah, you know, they could, their vibration can be there, you know, Absolutely. everyone has their own path. Right. But explain your, how you, your concept and why you even started a, a manifestation class. So I started a manifestation class because students were coming to me saying, sometimes manifestation works and sometimes it doesn't. Why does it work sometimes and not all the time? Why does it work for some people and not others? And I started to break it down into, I think I came up with like 12 different reasons why it works sometimes and not others. Maybe you haven't specified the goal clearly enough. Maybe you're not watching your vibration. Maybe you're saying you want to change, but you're not taking the action to change. And, you know, there's all these different things that can come up. And from there, I put together without even realizing it, I put together what was supposed to be a weekend course that became a three-week course that then became a three-month course. (laughs) And I said to my followers and my students, I was like, is this something you're interested in? If so, I'll offer it as a class. And they all said, yes. So um, I opened up a big class for manifestation, just general, how to find your dreams, how to find your life purpose. And then from there came up with a part two how to manifest prosperity and abundance, because there was just this big question mark over, 
okay, I've got the things that I want, but how do I get rich? How do I get money? And I was like, yes, let's do this. Let's have a money course too. And I'd actually been thinking about teaching a prosperity course oh, for about six or seven years, but just never felt drawn to do it. And so at that moment, I then launched the part two, which was the prosperity aspect. Explain the checks because you have, oh yeah, you know, when you, your check, um, when you were in Australia and you didn't even have checks. Oh yeah, that's right. So um, that's, that was really fun. So, um, you know, when I was, when I initially started doing manifestation, cause I started myself probably about 10 years ago, I discovered the concept of it. Um, and I started to play around with it. And to be honest, that's why I teach the course because I found there are things that work and things that just don't work. So I teach the students all the things that work for me and none of the things that didn't. So sometimes there's, you know, famous courses out there that'll teach certain things that are common among all courses. But if I've done those and they didn't work for me, I'm not going to teach it to my students. I'm only going to teach them the things that really, really made a difference. Um, so I did find that when I was out and about in New York, because I'd moved to New York when I started manifesting, I'd find money on the ground all the time. And I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, even when I traveled or in Australia, sometimes it would just be a few coins. Sometimes it would be a $20 bill. Sometimes I think the most I found was like $80 just scrunched up on the floor. And I always say to my students, you know, you should pick up the money because the universe is offering it to you. If you don't, the next person will. You can do whatever you want with the money. You can give it away. You can use it for charity. You can use it for yourself but receive when the universe is giving it to you. This is your opportunity to be blessed. Um, so I had read about this concept of receiving unexpected checks in the mail. And I didn't really know what it was about because as you said, in Australia, everything's electronic. We don't use checks. I'd never had a checking account before in my life. I had learned that checks exist in a economics class when I was probably 15 years old and I remember thinking, oh, oh there's funny. this thing called a check and when I'd moved to New York my roommate sat me down she's like okay this is how you write a check this is how you <laughs> bank it and I was like oh we, we got taught different things in Australia um, mm -hmm. but anyway I started doing the work and then on one of my trips back to Australia I um, I had done the manifestation and I was sitting there and I randomly received a letter in the mail from some online company saying, hey, um, we mischarged you for one of your hotels on your travels. Here's a check for 120 US dollars as a refund. And I remember opening it and showing it to my mom and saying, well, what do I do with this? I don't even have a US checking account. You know, I don't even know how to deposit this. And I, re I received my unexpected check in the mail. But what was even more funny was after I stopped traveling so much a few years ago, I have been more homebound and just more enjoying my life in one city at a time. And I noticed that because I'm not out and about, I don't tend to find money on the ground as much. And since then, the amount of unexpected checks have been flowing in through my mailbox because that's the path of least resistance. So if you give the universe a path of least resistance, the universe will use that to send you prosperity and abundance in the easiest, quickest way. But the prosperity mm -hmm. never stops once you're open to it. Right. Oh, and then the happiness bank. Talk about that. the happiness bank. Okay. So um, there's a few different interpretations of this. Firstly, there's the idea of on a financial level, the bank of the universe and the bank of the universe has unlimited funds and will send you money whenever you need it, if you are open to receiving it. And so that means not doubting yourself, not doubting the system, not doubting your worthiness, not doubting your ability to receive and all of those things. So working with that energy is more of a prosperity vibe. But when it comes to your general sense of spiritual well-being, I encourage people to bank, you know, in the sense of a verb, to bank your happiness so that when you're having a day where something sort of stressful or something a bit tough is happening, you've got a lot of energy to fall back on. So having a consistent routine, and you can think of this in terms of health. We eat right, we exercise so that if and when we do end up getting sick, we push through and we get through relatively unscathed. It's the same with your spiritual energy. If you take care of yourself, you surround yourself with positive people, you spend the time in nature that you need, you feel uplifted on a daily basis, you get the sleep that you need, you eat most of the food you need to eat, then when you have a stressful situation or a tough day, it's not that 
difficult to push through. You've already learned your boundaries. You've learned how to take care of yourself. You have your meditation routine and all of those things add up points in my point system. So, you know, meditating every day might be two points. Surrounding yourself by great people might be five points. Um, Having a, a good diet and exercise and just not overworking yourself might be another three points. And perhaps connecting to your family or your pets could be the rest that takes you up to 10. Mm -hmm. And so if you're always around an eight to 10 out of 10, then if you have a bad day or if you have something stressful, you'll probably dip to about a six, but it's really below five where the anxiety, the depression and the helplessness kicks in. So, you know, maybe that means for some people that you want to take some medication because that gets you above the five and over to that seven so you can function and sort your life out. Absolutely nothing wrong with that as well. So doing what you need to do to keep yourself at a higher level so that when something does hit you that's out of the blue, you can always stay in that zone of feeling prepared. Yeah. Oh gosh. When you're saying that to me this morning, when I was, when I left for my walk and I, yeah. you know, have you in my ears <laughs> and I'm, you know, thinking about you and listening to you and I'm in this funk with the girls in my oh. head, you know, and I had this like, and I, then I start listening to you talk about the happiness bank. Cause mm -hmm. I'm always on, the, I just said earlier, like I am always, I know how to do It's so important. I, I yes. just know that if I'm not here, it just feels so off. If I'm down to, even if like I'm at an eight, <laughs> yes. you know, and, and today I was lower than an eight. I haven't felt that weird in so long. And I kept mm -hmm. thinking, okay, Kalise, separate, separate. And then she starts talking about the happiness bank and I'm out in the nature <laughs> and I'm with my dogs and I'm <laughs> doing what I love and I live in the beautiful neighborhood. And so I kept, you're right. I just had to keep, and it was like, gosh, I, I don't think that would have hit me Mm -hmm. like it did today, because I, I don't usually start my day lower than that. And mm -hmm. it was like, Oh, it's so true. And it's, it makes you when you talk about manifesting or talk about um, seeing signs or, you know, I saw so many um, dragonflies this morning, I've been seeing so oh. many butterflies and then, and I know tr uh, uh, dragonflies are like transformation. So I was putting dragonflies separate. I'm transforming from being <laughs> this like needed mother to separateness. Yes. But it was just like that feeling that you do look for the signs when you're and the signs come, they're always there, but you just don't. So let's talk about that. Cause you do talk a lot about signs and, um, synchronicities. I always am about angel numbers lately. It's been one, two, three, one, one, two, three today, two, three, four. All you those. see them as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and constantly. it's a wonderful thing. You know, the universe always has a level of synchronicity that you can either tap into or tap out of. And when you are living at a higher frequency and a higher vibe, actually, let's just say this, you're always in synchronicity with whatever vibration you're vibrating. So if you're feeling, oh man, everything's funky, everything's stuck, I can't really get moving, that just means you're in synchronicity with the vibration of feeling stuck. All you have to do is, you know, pick from your list, whether it's affirmations, whether it's meditation, whether it's going for a walk, singing a song, dancing to your favorite tune, cooking, gardening, shaking it off, do your thing that gets you to that higher vibration. And all of a sudden, you will start to experience a different version of reality. So one thing that everyone can try, maybe you don't know what your affirmation is yet. Maybe you don't even know what keeps you stuck. But one thing that I find that's very effective is to just sit quietly, calm my mind, take a few deep breaths, relax the body, and then focusing on my heart chakra, just sending out vibes of happiness. And it comes from within. And it's this idea that we smile first and then the universe smiles back at us. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to know where those happiness vibrations are coming from. You don't have to know what they mean or how you're going to conjure them up. Just tell your higher self to release vibrations of happiness. And as they start to, and you can you can visualize this in your head that it radiates out like, you know, radio waves or sound waves. And as that radiates out, you'll start to feel your entire aura changing and even the room sort of changes when you do it. And within the next few hours, you'll start to find things just go really well. And all of a sudden you can call someone and get something done and then you get some good news and the day just gets better and better. And so one of the things that I like to teach people is that once you're on that wave, how to keep surfing it and how to keep that energy going. So that's definitely something where 
if you want to get in sync, you can just quickly shift your vibration that way. And then all of a sudden you'll start to feel that, gosh, everything just is so easy. And, um, you know, if only we could live like that every single day, but the more you're aware of your energy, the more you will. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I, it was such a great, um, lesson for me today. And I guess it was an awareness that I do stay in the highest vibration possible. I mean, it's just natural. And when it does feel, I always, you know, with the girls, I make them smile before they get out of bed. That's, or that's part of my class in the morning routine. I always say, even if you're not happy, when you move your cheeks and you smile and you have yes. to, you, you know, it sends the the chemicals to your brain. It says, oh, I'm happy. I don't know yes. why. <laughs> right. I think it's Harvard university. They did, they make the students do an exercise where they have to take um, a pencil or a pen and put it in their back teeth and bite down on it so that it yes. makes the, the little muscles crinkle next to their eyes and it releases happiness hormones. I know. So, I would say, and if you're not happy, so put a pen in your, your body. mouth. Yeah, put a pen there you go. Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> put it next to your bed. And if you don't want to get up, put it in your mouth and it'll tell your, your mind, your brain that you're happy. Mm. Um, but let's talk about mediumship because yes. I feel, and what I've learned from you, um, going down your rabbit hole is that everyone really is psychic. There's just different levels of that. And it's, right. you can train, you've had your, um, mentors that have helped you um, mm -hmm. open that gift even more. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you started, I, I was laughing when, uh, you were talking when you were in wall street or you're at a meeting or dinner and you're talking to some guy and he has this <laughs> dead person standing behind him and you're like, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But where you do see that, and there's different m types of mediums. Like there's ones, the trans, the one where you start taking upon the person's personality and Yes. Can there's you different levels that? of mediumship. Yeah. yeah. Different types of mediumship. So there's um, what I categorize as mental mediumship, which is where I'm seeing the spirit. I'm connecting to the spirit. I can hear the spirit and I will stay present in my physical body while relaying what they're saying to me. So through their energy, sometimes it's very clear, like clear audience. So it's like being on the phone. I can just hear what they're saying, repeat it and say it to you. So that's mental mediumship. It's only happening on a sort of mind to mind level. Then there's physical mediumship, which is the experience where that spirit, when the energy builds up strong enough and I can raise my vibration high enough, we can begin to experience, a lot of it actually comes from spirit, not just me, but we can experience physical manifestations of spiritual energy. So that can be like um, doors opening and closing, lights turning on and off. It gets a bit Harry Potter at that point. Um, things moving around the room, a ports and things of that nature. So the next level upon that could be seen as trance mediumship, trance, trance. And that's where I would allow my own spirit to step aside and allow the energy of the person who's in the spirit world to share my physical body. And that is based on the concept that we are a spirit in the physical body or that the physical body is within our spirit. So we have a spiritual body, we have a physical body and the two are attached while we're alive. And then when the physical body is no longer needed, we return to the world of spirit just like a car or a jacket after a hundred years, it's going to get pretty worn out. So it's okay to let it go. You know, right. even after 50 years, we get a bit worn out. So it's this idea that spirit can talk through us and share our physical body. When that happens, um, I've experienced the most amazing, amazingly talented physical mediums and, you know, their voices can change, their characteristics can change. And if you can see, um, the energy of mediumship, you can even watch their faces begin to change as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's a pretty amazing experience to witness. Who do you look up to or watch or in, who are your mentors that, that you look up to? There's so many, you know, I would say probably the one that's mostly in the public eye is Lisa Williams. She's always oh, yeah. been really wonderful to me and, you know, she's very authentic and she's very good at what she does. Um, a lot of them are sort of private mediums that you know, just work at local spiritualist churches. But what I do tend to find are the most important characteristics are people that operate with integrity and authenticity in this work. Um, it's not actually hard to come by when you're around the right people. 
But I will say that oh, actually Tony Stockwell is wonderful as well. I've, oh, right. I've done a lot of mentoring with him and yeah, he's pretty amazing and also a lot of fun. He's just a fun person. <laughs> and he's in the UK, is that? I believe he's in the UK. I want to say he's in London. Okay. Or just outside of London. But Lisa I, and Tony are the ones that you took, like you will help. They're probably they the two most you, right? notable that people would have heard of that I've trained with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just and, great people as well. And when you train with them, mm. they're teaching you how, like, what are they doing? Teaching you different. Yeah. So they don't, um, when you work with a mentor, the mentor doesn't make you psychic as such, which is something right. that you've mentioned before. You know, you're very correct in saying we all have a psychic ability in the same way that we all have the ability to sing. Some of us can spread the full four or five octaves. Other people maybe get two or three notes and it's what you do with it that determines your ability. So there's always a level of natural ability and then how much you train it and refine it will determine with what ability you end up with and whether or not you're able to give detailed readings and so forth. So what those mentors will do is to help you recognize and understand the ability you have, um, help you foster the ability you have. And one of the most amazing things that I've found and that my students find is that it's just someone to tell you when it's actually a message and when it's not. Because a lot of the time when you grow up with this ability, you think everything's normal. As I mentioned previously, you don't realize you're getting messages 24-7 or that face is actually a dead person or not everyone hears messages in their head or not everyone sees energy beyond this is going to sound bizarre, but beyond the physical light spectrum that most people see. Um, you know, so I hear things beyond what most humans hear. I see things beyond what most humans see. Um, and I'm not in the psych ward yet, so I do know that it's still <laughs> helping everyone. Oh, funny. And then people will say to me like, okay, so what's the difference between being psychic and being psycho? And, <laughs> you know, obviously that's not the politically correct term, but what I will say is that if you have any kind of mental struggles or mental illness, the difference would be that with the psychic and the mediumship, you are in control, but with mental illness, the illness is in control of you. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I get that. Two when very you, different vibrations. When, so what drew you, like what would draw you to go find Tony or Lisa? Like, are you sitting there going, Googling a uh, psychic teacher? <laughs> yeah, so not at all. And that's what's so funny is um, I was actually teaching a seminar at a healing center in New York City. And one of my students came up to me and said, oh, I know you're a fan of Lisa Williams. Do you know she's going to be in New York State later this month? I said, no, what are the details? And, you know, and he gives me the URL, the website address. And I looked it up, I booked straight away. And I was so excited to work with her. And I think that's the thing is just, are you excited to meet this person? Are you excited to work with them? And generally, if you're excited or if you're even interested, there's a reason, you know, so it's always kind of a little bit beyond logic. Like you said, you know, when our mutual friend introduced you to me. It's that thing of none of it really makes sense, but you just kind of follow what feels exciting and what feels interesting. Right. And it was the same with Tony because I think I'd grown up watching both of them on TV. And so okay. I'd always had a lot of respect for them and, and understood what they did. And um, having already gone through different courses at the local spiritualist church, I already felt quite connected to the work and confident enough to even sign up for their classes because that was another thing. I don't think I would have signed up for their classes if I hadn't have had at least a bit of a background in this work. Right. Um, and yeah, then just having my expectations exceeded, spending time with them and working with them. I have worked as well with other um, mentors that were not as positive and not as uplifting, but i I didn't necessarily feel with those others as excited to work with them from the beginning. And it kind of made sense after a while. So I would say if you're excited to meet someone or interested, that's generally a good sign. Right. Let's um, shift gears and talk mm. about, I was listening to you talk about the set. You, you look at uh, the spirit world or the, the uh, seven tiers. So God, okay. um, the angels, the spirit guides, how to explain that, explain how, you know, we have our little part of our soul and our, in this human body, we have a higher self. We have another part of our soul where somewhere living another life all at the same time. <laughs> well, yes, that is one idea. And I think that's the idea that the spiritualist church follows that there's seven tiers between the physical world and the 
almighty energy that some people consider God or all that is or the ruler, you know, um, whoever's at the top. For me, the way I look at it is a little bit more neutral in the sense that I'm still I'm still a bit of a big bad skeptic when it comes to spiritual work. I haven't quite ever escaped my scientific brain from my youth, which was when you die, you die, and that's nothing else. Oh, I'm very right. slow to come out of that shell. So um, the way I see it is if I've seen it and if I've heard it and experienced it, it's real. But if I haven't seen it, I haven't heard it, I haven't experienced it, I don't necessarily know and therefore I won't teach it yet. So everything's possible because I've experienced some stuff that I formerly thought was impossible and now I'm open to anything being possible, but I'll only endorse it or teach it if I've lived it and experienced it. So what I can say about the seven tiers is there's definitely us, there's definitely a higher self, there's definitely spirit guides, there's definitely ancestors in the spirit world. There seems to be some kind of overarching power out there, um, but that's all I've experienced. So there is a concept that there's different tiers of ascended guides and there's guides that are that have walked to the physical plane, guides that haven't. So a spirit guide is an energy that works with you from the other side as your own private mentor or spiritual helper, one could say. Right. And we all have them. And whether you're aware of it or not, they work with you almost like a guardian angel. And I have experienced some spirit guides that you could say are more wise and older souls than others. Um, and perhaps they have been around longer. They have more areas of expertise than others who feel like they've literally just crossed over in the last lifetime, but they all have a role to play. So there's many different energies you can work with and the energy you need will come to you when you need it. I think the most important things to recognize for the average person is that you have yourself you have a higher level of consciousness, which will let you know when you're out of alignment. And there are other energies that will help you along the way if you ask for their help. So right. don't be afraid asking. to ask. It's yeah. the asking, Colleen. They will come through so strongly when you ask. Right. And if you don't ask, sometimes you don't get. So don't be afraid to ask. They will right. always help you when you really, really need it, but they will never be bothered by you asking. They want to help, but it's almost like what I found is, they're not going to intervene unless you want them to. So they sit there waiting. Is she going to ask? Is she going to ask? Is she going to, oh, she's asking. Okay, great. We can come in and make those changes. Right. What? So the angels and the spirit guides have never been in a, in a body, correct? That's the idea, but I don't find that to be true. I do find guides that have walked to the physical plane, which is why we can say, oh, it's a he and he looks like this and his name is this. Um, but there are some guides that apparently have not walked the physical plane um, that have more higher energies. The idea of angels is very much connected to the idea of organized religion. So there are angelic presences out there, but whether we call them angels or just higher ascended masters or ascended guides is really up to the interpretation of the person who's connecting to them. Right. And do we, are we together when we decide to ascend into a body and decide who our spirit guides are? Are they always been our spirit guides? Great question. Do we change, do we change every time we come? Yeah. So um, apparently we change most of the guides when we come into the, into the physical. Um, there's, there's so much to, to explain here. <laughs> oh, good. So um, we have one guide in our physical life that's considered our master guide master and master that okay. we've had assigned to us since birth. And you'll have that guide with you through your entire incarnation in this life. And that guide will stay with you. Their energy is so comfortable that you may not even know when they're around because they're always around. They're never not around. So it'll just feel like normal when they're around. Hmm. Then we have other guides that switch in and out during our life to help us along our journey with different things we're doing. So perhaps if you're training to be a chef and you had a grandmother that was really good at cooking or really into cooking, she may come in while you're going through culinary school to help you along your journey. Or maybe you're a scientist or a business person and there's someone in spirit that's really good at that. They'll come in and help you with it. 
perhaps even it's something a bit more personal or abstract. You're being bullied and there's someone that was a bully in their previous life and they're coming back to correct their karma and their karmic energy and they come back to work with you on levels of compassion, building confidence and boundaries and both of you are benefiting from that experience. So guides can switch in and out according to what phase you're going through, what kind of support you need and where you're headed. Then when it comes to coming into the physical realm, I understand that sometimes someone who is a best friend in a previous life or maybe your lover, your partner, your parent, they may choose to stay behind as your number one spirit guide and you'll choose to incarnate. And in that way, you'll have this deep connection throughout that lifetime, but just across the planes. Hmm. So one, one of you will be in spirit, one of you will be in the physical. And that could be for various reasons. Perhaps one of you wants to take a break. Perhaps that's what's coming up in your life contract for that incarnation and so on. And why do we choose to come down? Like I've had guests that said there's a line of, you know, there's 8 billion people on this planet, but there's a line of people, souls just waiting to come. Like we're here right now in this body. Like that's a miracle. Like we, like the, I hear you saying that too. Like, look, I mean, just being here right now is like the biggest thing ever. <laughs> yes. And I heard a conversation the other day. Um, it must have been on a podcast or something where a guy says to his guests, you know, I'll give you all a million dollars or $15 million, a hundred million dollars. Would you take it? And they'll say, yeah. And he says, well, the only, there's only one string attached. And that is you can have your hundred million dollars, but tomorrow will be the last day that you wake up. Do you still want it? And they all said no. And he said, well, why don't we value our life that much as a hundred million dollars worth every day being alive and having this experience? Because if it's really worth that much to you, you should be excited about getting up every day and enjoying every moment you have. So no pressure or anything, right. but it's a lot of fun to think about the fact that life is what you make it. And every day is an opportunity to have a lot of fun in right. the physical world. Yes. And it really is a special experience. It is. And would we, um, when you're re doing a reading with someone, can you tell if they're an old soul or a newer soul? Is there something that you can feel from them? Yeah. Generally there's a level of maturity or a level of patience that comes with an older soul. Um, also a level of emotional awareness and spiritual awareness. It's not really something I could say like, oh, here's a checklist of what to look for. But I will say that there's nothing wrong with being a younger soul as well. Younger souls can be a lot of fun and bring a lot of joy and happiness and mischief into life. So, you know, we do have a bit of a bias that everyone wants to be an older soul or, you know, that it's something kind of glamorous. But to be honest, all souls have a place in right. existence. Yeah. When you say old soul versus a younger soul, does it mean the old soul has been out of, has been involved in a human body more off more than a, than a younger soul? They're newer coming from the one source. <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah. So the idea is that if you've had more incarnations or had more time um, as a spirit that you will be more wise and be more of an older soul having had more incarnations and that if you're a newer soul you've had less lifetimes less experiences and sort of less maybe less awareness as well more childlike in your nature can you pick do you see souls that pick their life to be super hard and like I they really wanted to come here and get a lot of is I know you you say karma is a mm. belief system. I mean, mm. I really like the way you describe karma. Will you describe that? Because I feel like some people think, oh, I came down and I have all this karma and I, you know, that. Yeah, kind of that can be cultural too. You know, there are a lot of cultures that get a bit superstitious and think, you know, if I commit something bad, then my children will pay for my sins. And in, in some ways that can be true, but it really depends on your own belief system as to what actually happens. You know, if we think about the principles of manifestation, what you put out is what you get back. Everything exists right now. The world is neutral and it is what you decide it to be. It's a very troubling thing to think. I wouldn't say it's troubling. It's, it's interesting to think about because you can go in so many directions with it. But the main idea is that everything around us is neutral. There's no good. There's no evil. Right. And if that's the case, we can assign meaning to anything. So we could say, okay, I've done something really awful. My karma is now that I'm going to receive awful things. Now, 
that could be true, but someone else might look at what you did and say, that was actually really noble of you. That was really amazing. You made that sacrifice and how cool are you? And so then it becomes a matter of perspective. So what we believe to be good or bad is where the definition begins and then how the karma unfolds from there will honestly be determined by our vibration that we carry after carrying out that task. And I would love to say that people who do really, really bad things will be punished, but I think the world would be a different place if that were true. So unfortunately, people just do things how we react is what we experience. And it's always really good to try and be as nice as possible as you can to everyone around you. It will make the world a better place and it will make your life a much better experience. Right. I was listening to you talk about perspective. Everything is perspective. And I believe that just like what you said is, you know, it's the meaning you give it. It all is neutral. Yeah. And that wasn't something that I ever really logically deduced. It just popped into my head one day um, when I was at university and the religious club came up to me to ask me about a survey and they said, um, you know, do you believe in good and evil? Do you, it was, it was around the time of a lot of terrorist attacks and things, you know, it's evil in the world and right. that idea. And I said, well, to be honest, you know, the people that are committing those acts probably think they're doing something really great. And we think they're doing something really awful because they were hurting us. We were being hurt and they felt that they were being hurt. And so in the end, it's just perspective. And um, I don't think that was the answer they were looking for. And I I think that that, um, there there was some (laughs) long pauses in that conversation and eventually they just kind of, you know, we agreed to disagree and got about our day after that. But, yeah, you know, when spirit has a perspective, it does kind of download randomly like that. So it's a good thing to have gaps in your thoughts. It's a good thing to not be plugged in all the time, you know, podcast, social media, love a good podcast. We obviously, you know, please keep listening to this podcast and all the things you have to say, but it's good to have gaps in the day where you just sit and think and just have your own thoughts, particularly if you want to grow your intuition. Right. And when you go on an airplane and you're on it for 13 hours and you don't even bring anything, not even to read, nothing. Nope. Sometimes even like, 15. Wow. I know. There's a direct flight to Dallas from Australia. I think it's 15 and a half hours. Um, I, I don't, oh, that was probably too long. I would say that one was probably one I don't, I'm not excited to repeat, but um, <laughs> it's time goes really fast when you're okay, comfortable with your own energy. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's so important feeling. these days. I mean, I look at it with my girls in this social media, that's all they've known their whole life. And it's such an addiction. And I, you know, it's like, I watch my students and their parents are like, Oh, it's like their babysitter. And I'm thinking, Oh, we don't even know the, what's going to come from all that um, addiction and where, where it's going, but mm. it's, it is, it's what you, your perspective on it, right? What you, what yes. you focus on. <laughs> yeah. It could be great. The it story. Can be damaging. Right. right. And you know, it could be inspiring and it could be that thing that gives you the amazing idea of how to change the world because you saw something that someone posted that gave you an idea of something you want to do. And it can be really uplifting at the same time. It can drain and reset the dopamine levels in your head, which can lead to anxiety and depression if not managed or not yeah, not put into perspective from early on. So before I close this out, I wanted to, yes. I'd love to hear what you, you know, I was listening to Bashar. You Okay. Okay. And he was explaining. Yes, I'm aware of Bashar. Yes. If anyone's listening to this podcast, they are, they know who Bashar is. But, okay, great. <laughs> um, so he was explaining um, that we are living this, you know, like we can be living you know, in this higher dimension at the same time as these other people are living in the 3d in the, in the misery, but you know, all these yep. things that are going on right now, you can either, like we talked about just now, focus on what, ha- what ha- what's happening in Maui, focus on what's happening in the government, focus on what's happening, you know, all these things that are going on right now in 2023, mm. but we can still live here, right? Like he says, we don't even, I don't folk, if you don't focus on it, you can, it's not, you're avoiding it. You're living in a different, he says it's like glass walls. Exactly. What you focus on becomes your experience of reality. Now that doesn't mean, you know, don't be prepared for the rainstorm that's coming tomorrow, but it does mean you don't have to think about that rainstorm every single second between now and tomorrow and worry about things that you can't control. So somewhere in between tends to be the sweet spot. And I heard, um, 
a show the other day, which I just thought was so interesting. It was a comment by uh, an NPR reporter where he said that, you know, in the 60s, it was all about bring down the man and bring down capitalism. And he said, well, these days, the man is the media, you know, our Mm -hmm. enemy is the media, because that's the one that's sort of creating all these scary ideas to keep us distracted. And everyone will have a different perspective on that. And that's fine. But I think it's more just this idea of if you focus on what's around you and the love that's around you and the world that's around you, you can still be prepared for all the things that may affect you, but you don't have to be immersed in it. You'll have a much easier time if you sort of unplug and focus on yourself for a little bit, right. you'll have more energy to give as well. Yeah. And I, you know, I see, you know, people, I don't watch the news. I don't even, I didn't, we were, we were having a hurricane a couple of weeks ago and my okay. husband's like, oh, there's a hurricane. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't, it didn't, what didn't end up being a hurricane. It was a little yeah. rain storm, but um, I don't, so I, and I didn't focus on that. And I see the, you know, everyone's it's this big panic in the, their life. And I feel like that takes, you know, the, what we want to be in this high vibration in this, uh, manifesting mode of this beautiful, magical life. When you are lower, lowering your focus on this, you know, storm or whatever it is, it mm. brings that down. And now you're, you're not, you're living on the other side of that glass wall. Yes. And there's a sweet spot in between where, you know, if you are very connected to your intuition and there is a real threat, you will feel it regardless of the news, you know? So that's why I say to people, especially to my students, if you feel something's a little bit off or something doesn't feel right, trust that feeling. You've literally got nothing to lose. Don't necessarily worry about what people tell you. If you feel, you know, it's, it's even really simple. If you, if the phone's ringing and you don't feel like answering it, and you want to call someone back, then then try it out. You know, it might be that you're having a moment of anxiety and you just feel very introverted, but it might actually be that that's a person that you don't need to speak to at that moment. And that small little piece of intuition can be the difference between getting into very dangerous situations and feeling very much okay and even finding amazing opportunities. Right. Where do you see um, in your vision the world going like into this beautiful love fest or what, what is oh, it? It's such a good question. Mm-hmm. I mean, the general idea for, in spirituality is that there's sort of two worlds at the moment. You know, there are people who will live in the lower vibrations of um, struggle and people that will live in the sort of spiritual vibration of understanding the universe, understanding the spiritual energies and harnessing those to have a really great experience. I do believe that the ones who are able to find any sort of faith or any version of understanding or knowing beyond what's in front of them may have an easier time navigating through the next decade than those that don't have a sense of faith. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if things you know, I, this is this is such a, a big ticket. You know, it's such a hard thing to say that, okay, the next 10 years are going to be a bit tough and it, because it's all perspective, right? You know, if you're in a family where someone's passed away or had a cancer diagnosis or you went bankrupt during a prosperous time of the world, you could say, oh, the next 10 years are the best years of my life. The last 10 right. years were terrible. But if we just say, okay, world conditions may get a bit crummy in the next 10 years, but if you've got faith in you're doing fun things, they can be the, the best 10 years of your life. Right. So I I will say, work on your energy now, everyone go and do those courses, do the yoga, do the manifestation, you know, do all the things that make you feel amazing. And then regardless of what's going on around you, you'll just be surfing the waves and you'll just be having a great time. And that's also something Bashar talks about. It's not about what happens. It's what you do with what happens that determines the outcome. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. What is, as we end any last, um, words of Khalees could any kind of messages could come through anything that you could think of that you could share with everyone yeah actually what I just said I think is my closing message okay is that it's not about what happens it's what you do with what happens it's what you do with the energy around you so really think in those moments is this happening to me or is this happening for me and if it's happening for me how will I react to it Right. 
Oh, I'm all about for you. <laughs> That's the that saying my girls have learned from day one is everything's working for you. Oh. And, and it's it, so true. So true. And everything's perfect. I'm like the, those are my two sayings, <laughs> but Excellent. it just lifts that um, energy of your, your soul. I feel like to know that everything is for you Absolutely. and that it's perspective. Like, I mean, that's the theme of our talk is like, it is a, the, uh, the way we, whatever we want to label it, you know, cause everything is neutral. Yeah. And once you start going down those rabbit holes, you will experience a, a very different version of what's available to you than if you even just do nothing. Sometimes right. it's just about being neutral. You don't have to be happy all the time. It's not easy to be happy all the time if you're not used to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's just about being a little less negative than you were the day before. And that'll be enough to give you a, a great experience the following day. Yes. And how do people find you, Colise, like I did? Of course. <laughs> Not like I did, but <laughs> you know, talk to your friends. And if you get a referral, come say hi. <laughs> um, it's so funny. I thought about this the other day. Pretty much everyone I've read for has been referred by someone else, huh. you know, and that's how I've got this beautiful group of people around me like you, you know, where everyone's just told a friend, you know, you have a good experience, tell a friend. So I will say that to people. If you enjoy your experience, tell a friend. And that's how great people come together. But um, you can find me on Instagram at Khalees Simone. You can find me on the web, KhaleesSimone.com. And that's how you can book a reading with me as well through the website, through social media. I have Twitter and Facebook, but I don't use them as often. And my name is C-A-L-I-S-E, S-I-M-O-N-E. And you have classes, you're having your manifestation class. That's right. I have a prosperity and abundance class. There's actually only one seat left. So please join oh. if you want to gra grab that last seat, whoever's out there. Um, a prosperity and abundance manifestation class that starts mid-September and that goes for three months and you get coaching all through that time with a wonderful group of students. And then the after that, the next event I'll be having is a Halloween seance. So that will be a fun uh, experience if you want to do something truly spiritual on the night of Halloween. Yes, I put my name on the wait list for that, for the Halloween oh, seance. Well, I, just to go on that really quick is, sure. you know, I've never really... Halloween to me has been finding the cute costumes for the girls, decorating right. it, going trick or treating, but then listening to all your Halloween. I mean, you really are. I mean, that's a big Halloween is it, you it's changed the meaning for me. Wow. Really. I know. And the thing is when I started doing this work, there's almost a little piece of me that misses the cute costumes and the fun parties with the crazy candy right. and stuff like that. Cause to me that that's just like a distant memory um, once you start doing this work, you understand that there's almost like a whole religion around Halloween. You know, it's a pagan holiday and it's very meaningful to a lot of people uh, from a religious perspective. But it really is spiritually a time where the veil between the two worlds thins so much that you'll notice a lot of people, you might not notice this because I speak to more people about death than the average person, but one may notice that more people tend to pass around Halloween. Um, and more significant life changes happen around Halloween and more spiritual phenomena happens around Halloween as well. And it's, it's this wonderful energy because you're going from, you know, from the perspective of crops, you're going from one season into the next harvest season. So it really is this sort of death and rebirth energy surrounding all forms of life. Oh, gosh, I, I never <laughs> knew that. <laughs> that was, I mean, there's a lot of things I didn't know too, but I was like, wow, I never, I'll look yeah. at Halloween so much differently. And I want to go to your, to your seance. Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely. Please come. It would be great. Oh, to have you. So great. Thank you so much for being here. I've loved it. I love my reading. You've changed my life or, you know, I just know that oh, you're so it's welcome. something that will help me get through the next maybe year, six months. I, I mean, absolutely. I heard you say like it could last for a year. It could last for two years but yeah. you'll know when it's ready for your next one. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There, there's no real time limit. Um, if things have significantly changed in your life, you want more guidance, people can come for another reading, but after a deep reading generally, yeah, it can last you six or 12 months, even more, a right. very detailed reading. So it's definitely an investment. Uh, oh, for sure. And one thing before we, I hit stop yeah. is I was visiting my mom this weekend over Labor Day 
And um, I was telling her about my grandmother. You don't really remember readings. I'm just giving you my, what I took, what I took from you was that my sure. uh, spiritual um, gifts are from my mom's, um, her, her ancestors, right? That's but right. There was yes. a grandmother that had a rolling pin and I was like, okay, Khalees. And you're like, <laughs> she's rolling this rolling pin and you're sitting there and you're little and you're listening to her because you believe what she's saying, all these amazing magical things. So I said, mom, did your grandmother have a rolling pin? She's like, oh my gosh, she would roll that pin like, and you would sit there. And I said, really? <laughs> wow. So I loved it. You know, it's just those things that come out that you just go a rolling pin. Like, I don't. Yeah. And this is why I say to people, please save the recording. And I'm so glad you did. And you obviously, you know, took the reading seriously because there's things that come through that you don't even know. I don't know. You know, I wasn't there when you were growing up. So I'm not going to know. You probably won't remember. But if your mom can clarify it for you, then we really know that was spirit. Right. You know, there's no way even either of us would have known. It's so cool. That's yeah. so great that she was able to yeah, give I confirmation that. on that. Yeah, that was so awesome. Fun. I'll never look at a rolling pin the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome. Was